Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking a quick look at the Sennelier paints. I've never used them before so this will be nice for me to try these out. Now the main reason that I decided to buy this little set of 14 was because it's you know a nice size for a travel set. Now those of you that have seen my previous um, videos on what I like to take with me when I go sketching will know that I've normally used these and I've actually been out this morning um, with the ladies that I teach here at, uh, in my studio and I've been using these this morning and quite often when I'm sketching I will just do an ink sketch I won't actually put any colour on so I'll show you what I've been doing um, in this nice little sketchbook here let's just have a look that was an earlier one so this morning we were down on the canal and we have locks by the canal so there's the lock here uh, and the water in the foreground and all those colours came from this little set here and it's actually got a hinge so these are the Caran d'Ache Neo colours and the water soluble um, and the thing about them is you just tear back the paper when you, you you know when you need a little bit more you tear back the paper so I've torn back the paper on all of them and I basically use them I'll just get the the water brush I basically use them just by picking up the colour here um, and I use this part of the as you can see by the mess on here I use this for mixing colours over here so that's what I've been doing this morning using this little set but I thought it would be nice to have a go with some different colours and try some water colours from when I'm, when I'm away so I mean they are quite useful the Caran you can see this is one just done with two colours that was a snowy scene um, when I was skiing earlier in the year so that's what quite often what I'll do is just a little bit of ink um, with a drawing pen and then pop a bit of colour over the top. So also this morning I've been just doing some ink sketches of the flowers that were on the canal bank as well and these are some dandelions growing out of the canal wall there and decided not to put any colour on those because it was more about the form of the flowers. Um, but I might use, I might actually try out these paints on these sketches that I've got here. So I'll just put that to one side for a moment and have a look at this. So I've made a little chart out of all the colours uh, which so I can put them next to them and then I'll pop this on the studio wall for future reference. So the good thing about them is they're not wasting packaging, there's just one little cardboard box that they come in um, with all the information on there that you need, there's no load, not loads of plastic or anything like that and they come in this handy little um, plastic container so if you undo the lid there it pulls out and then you've got this hole to put your thumb through and I don't know if you can see there's a little groove there to hold it um, and it also comes with a brush and obviously you've got the palettes here so how long this oh it's let me just see that's can you see how it's, it's an angle there it's not just sliding back in that easy you have to get it lined up so how long this would last using it like this made in plastic uh, I'm not sure but you know that's something that only time will tell and um, so you can shut it without shutting the bottom part but if you shut the bottom part then that goes down automatically that last little bit which is quite handy because that does mean then that they're fastened in and they can't fall out in the car or whatever okay so I think the the best thing for me to do now would go ahead and take all these wrappers off I've done them in in order and I'll go through the colors as I take them off and um, the little brush here that's come we'll give that a try out as well that's obviously made by them it's got their name on Sennelier there and it's a size 3 round brush and it comes with the usual plastic cover on so we'll give the little brush uh, a go as well, I've already got a brush out but I will I will use that one so I always just discard the little cover as soon as they come because you're not going to get those back on without disturbing the bristles and the nice thing about this is it comes with these holes at the back here um, so you can easily use the end of your brush to pop out your pans because I find I'll just get my other pan can you see what the way I work I'm so messy you get all paint around the edges here especially if you look at these and I end up having to get a knife to get them out when I want to replace them I mean, a lot of these aren't replaced I just add, add uh, paint from the straight from the tube but you know a lot of these are very difficult to get out and they have the color written on the side of these pans as well sometimes you want to pop them out just to see what color it is to tell somebody um, so like I say I end up getting a knife to get them out so this is much safer having those um, little holes on the back and just push through and pop them out I won't do them all because I'll end up forgetting what order they were in okay so I'll be back with you in a minute or oh, actually before I do that I'll just I want to say I bought an extra one and when I looked at the colours in the description of what came in this set I mean it's quite a good value set as opposed to buying them all in uh, individual colours you know you get you get a good 
amount for your money with the, the 14 that are in here but as you can see there's a lot of red we've got four reds there and an orange as well and if you compare that to the amount of blue and yellow that we've got we've only got one yellow so I decided before they even came when I ordered them that I would order an extra yellow because I use a lot of yellow and I didn't think there was going to be enough for me here so I've got a yellow ochre and what I will do is swap it for one of these reds but I don't know which red I'm going to take out yet until I've tried them all so that's what I'll do next I'll, I'll uh, unwrap them all and come back and try them all Okay, so I've got all those taken out of the packaging, and as you can see, they've got the names, uh, sorry, the numbers of the colour on the side. So, you know, don't worry if you do lose your list of colours, you'll be able to look them up again to reorder because you've got the number there on the side of the pan. So, I'm going to start and do this little colour chart and see what we've got. And I will start with their little brush, but I might swap brushes if uh, it's no good. We'll see. See how easy it lifts. Now, like I said, I have never used these before and I'm attracted by the fact that it says that they're honey-based because I'm hoping that means that they'll have a nice finish on them. So we're starting with the lemon yellow, which is a lovely bright yellow. And just pop some water to this side. Let's see what, uh, what tones we can get with that. And then we go on to orange. So quite a handy sized little brush, but smaller than I'm used to working with. I used, I like to work with quite a decent sized brush really. So again, another nice colour, the orange. Nice and bright so far. The pigment lifts off really easily. And plenty of colour, just with that little bit of pigment. So this is the French Vermilion. And that's a, a nice warm, warm red. Very pretty. You can see that being useful, especially with things like flower painting. So we move on to alizarin crimson. Alizarin is one I use a lot, so this is probably one that I won't swap out for the um, ochre. Not as heavily pigmented as some of the, the others. And then we're moving on to carmine. I mean, lovely reds, so you know it's making me wonder which one I'm going to swap because this is another very much a rose red, really. And the quinacridone, quinacridone, sorry, rather red. Now that's perhaps the one that I might swap out that I might not use just as much as as the others. It's not so different to the to uh, well it is yeah this is much more blue isn't it now we've put them together this one looks much more of a so we've got a hair in it there um, much more of a bluey colour just getting that I don't know why I need to get rid of that hair but I do I think that must have come off this brush which again isn't a great thing is it there gone um, so we'll go on to the purple. And you can see I'm not adding a lot of water and not um, having to scrub at those pans to get the colour off. The colour's coming off really easily. And can you see how I started off putting lots of space between them and they got, they got closer and closer together as I run out of paper. So I'm going to have to put these a bit closer together now. Ultramarine is one that I use a lot. And I use the um, Windsor and Newton ones normally as those of you who watch regularly will know. This isn't as deep darker shade as the Windsor Newton but a nice colour phalo blue again a nice bright pigment and then onto the greens forest green I don't often use the greens straight out of the pan without adding, adding anything to them I often um, with the the, the greens, the ready-made greens, add a touch of something else. So if I want to use it and I want it to look a bit more natural, I'll add a tiny touch of alizarin to it. Sometimes I might add either blue or yellow if I want to change the um, how warm or cool it is. So this is the green, light green, the phalo light green. It's quite an artificial looking colour, that one. So again, I will probably not use that 
um, just on its own but it's a nice bright colour burnt sienna another one that I use a lot I mix this a lot with ultramarine so in a moment I think I'll get another piece of paper and see the ones that I usually mix in the Winsor Newton I'll see what they're like mixed in this I'm gonna to have to get a bit closer together here because we're gonna run out of paper oh, am I still in shot yes um, again not just as dark as the uh, Winsor Newton one I don't think not as heavily pigmented going on to Payne's Grey I don't use Payne's Grey a lot but handy to have I suppose and warm sepia similar to a number I suppose and then the one that I bought separately that I'm gonna swap for one of those reds is the ochre because I use this a lot so this little brush is quite nice actually, it's, it picks up the pigment pretty quick, easily. We're not having to scrub at those pans like I said, just a little bit of water and they're coming off quite nicely. Um, that's not as, doesn't seem as pigmented as the others, let's just put a little extra in, that's better. Yeah. Okay, so a nice little uh, colour chart for me to pop on the side uh, in the studio so that I know what colours I've got there for a, another time. <sighs> excuse me. So, what I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll get another piece of paper, if you just excuse me one minute, and have a go at mixing some of the usual colours that I normally use. Okay, so I've got another piece of paper, and what I'm going to use is use my uh, another different brush, a bigger brush, and I'll use this pan for mixing them in. I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't really come out straight it seems to want to go go oh that's better it's obviously a little bit fickle that draw so like I said before how long it lasts we'll have to wait and see so one color that I use a lot of is burnt sienna with not too much water mixed with some French ultramarine in order to make a nice dark color a, a dark gray that you might use in a landscape for some shadows or for some stone or something just add a bit more blue to that actually too much blue there we go that might be nice and dark so you can see how those two, those two colours together make some nice greys that you could use for things like walls. So that's fine, they've worked really well. And um, what other colours do I usually mix? So like I said, I don't often use the greens on their own. I would normally add to the green to change the colour a little. So let's try it with some of the lemon yellow. That's going to make quite a bright green actually, isn't it? A little bit unnatural, so then what I would do now would be to put some alizarin in that, because obviously red is on the opposite side of the colour wheel to green, so anything that's on the opposite side is going to sort of neutralise it in a way. So you've got much more natural green. So yeah, they're mixing really nicely to make some nice colours. Let's have a go at making our own green now from one of the blues, the ultramarine and again the lemon yellow that's a nice green, quite a grassy green and then we'll try the same ultramarine with a touch of this yellow ochre that I'm going to pop in in a moment whoops, going to mess that up a little bit a little bit too blue still try and clean the top of that so again a very natural colour that you can you can see all these colours well with the exception of this one here perhaps in um, you know in a landscape 
So we'll swap out the colour that I think I probably wouldn't use so much. I, I mean, I may not actually use Payne's Grey that much um, because I tend to, if I want a dark colour, I tend to use the Ultramarine mixed with the uh, Burnt Sienna. So I'm just wondering whether to swap out the Payne's Grey or whether to swap out one of these reds. I think for now I'll swap out a red and then maybe after I've used it a few times, I'll come back and think about whether I want to swap the red for the Payne's Grey. Okay, so I've swapped them. What I did was move the rest of the reds along. That was a bit tricky whilst they were wet because when I popped them out from underneath they were going everywhere. So you can see that's a bit messy now. Um, so I've moved the reds along and popped the yellow ochre next to the lemon yellow. So we've now got our two, le two uh, yellows, one orange, three reds. What, which was that? Oh, that was the purple, wasn't it? And then two blues, two greens, two browns and the Payne's grey. So that makes it a bit you know, a bit a better mix than having all those reds and not enough yellows. So I'll put that somewhere safe and like I say, I may swap that back at another time. So I think to, to finish off, I'm just going to see how we go on with my sketchbook. Just pop those out of the way. The ones that I did this morning. This is a nice thick watercolour paper. Um, it's actually a handmade sketchbook, this. So uh, it's got a lovely thick paper in and I'll just have a go at some of these flowers here if I can remember which were which. So we don't really need to mix them too much for these first ones because uh, these were buttercups. So just popping a splash of colour on, trying out this little brush, see how, how well it does in this um, little sketchbook. Like I said before, it did lose a hair, and if you can see, it's not making that great a point. I probably would take another brush with me. I might as well use some of these greens that I made up just now. that are still left there on the palette. Let that flow into that yellow. Again, this was another buttercup further back. So you're not going to get a fine line with this brush because it doesn't have that nice point to it. And we'll use that same yellow, the centre of the daisy. Mix these greens up a little bit. Some of these were just grasses, there was ferns, um, all sorts on the canal bank this morning. Lots of daisies, lots of dandelions, cow parsley especially. These were little like, um, I don't know what you call them really, some sort of little grass things that had like a pale brown pods to them. I think this was a fern. Again, you can also mix on the paper if you decide you want to alter your greens, if you want to put a little bit of yellow on, on top, just to give us some variety in the greens that we're using. Or indeed a little bit of blue to make them uh, a little bit darker in places as well. I mean, it was a very sunny day, so I'm just going to put some of that yellow behind that daisy to make that daisy pop out because obviously those petals were white. So on the side actually this little brush covers, you know, you can see it covers quite nicely, did quite a nice little wash. So you could quickly put a bit of sky in. Again, this was a little bit of grass or something. So I was just looking at all the different varieties of grasses and things really. So it's more about the form of these grasses and things than the colour at the time. So 
So obviously the top of those, the cow parsley's was were sorry was were white. So again, we need to do a bit of negative painting to make those pop out a bit. Just add some of that yellow. Oops, that's quite dark. <laughs> Let's put a bit more shadow on those, make them pop out a bit more colour. Yeah, so you can see for a sketchbook how that's going to be really quite handy. I'm just going to finish with getting a little bit of blue for the sky. That's not really a sky blue, is it? So let's just pop something in there to calm that down a bit. Let's just get some of the orange. And go around these. So again, orange is opposite to blue on the um, colour wheel. So if you want that to look more, a bit more natural, more of a sky, you know, you can just use a touch of orange in it to calm it down a bit. So it's always no, worth knowing your colour wheel. Get to know what's on the opposite side of the colour wheel. You can just use the side of this little brush to bring some sky into the picture. Just use up what's on the palette there. So the idea for this was it was going to be more of what was in the foreground of that other painting that I showed you on the last um, picture. So if we um, if we look over the previous page this canal scene there's lots of grasses and flowers in the foreground so when I come to do this as a bigger painting I've got that detail there of which flowers were in that foreground and what a sunny bright day it was as well okay so I hope you found that useful uh, like I say I've never used the Sennelier before so if you like them and you use them let me know what you think in the comments below indeed if you've got this little set let me know what you think of that so far I really like them I like the way they've mixed together on the paper I like the way that the colours have mixed on here. I particularly like the way you know that they're drying on there together. A nice finish to them, lovely colours, a nice bright set um, for being out and about with and, and it probably should be able to make pretty much whichever colours I need out of those. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, bye for now and I shall see you again soon.